Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Lena Abajamra. We are gonna take another Dear Lena question today. It's so great to have you back. If you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, do it now. And if you have, it's great to have you back. Hey, uh, we have been doing this thing where you ask me questions at dearlena at livingwithpower.org and I try to come up with three practical answers, three bullet point answers for every question. I'm an ER doctor. I'm also a Christian, a follower of Jesus. The goal of these questions is to give you biblical truth for everyday life and it's to restore hope for the Christian and the post Christian world. By post Christian, remember, we mean a world that no longer adheres to the Judeo Christian's belief uh, of the Bible and what uh, we learn about God and His Word. And so, if you're struggling to fit into this culture, hey, take heart. This is how. Uh, Jesus predicted it would be. And so uh, here we are. We've got questions today that I'm going to answer that I think are going to really be a blessing to you. Uh, we're going to talk about women today. And I'm a woman, so I'm pretty excited about this. And the question that was sent to me is this. Dear Lena, should women be pastors? Common question that comes up in Christian circles. So if you go, if you've paid paying attention at all for the past, I don't know, 10 years or so, maybe 15 years, then you've seen a ton of books come out on this topic, this debate between what we call complementarianism and egalitarianism and the role of women in the church. Complementarians are sort of the old fashioned uh, part of the church that sort of grew up to where I grew up. Basically, a lot of us grew up, which was sort of the anti-feminist. The Bible teaches that only men can be pastors and elders. And so the concept, though, of complementarianism is that uh, men and women are created equal but different. God created male and female as complementary expressions of the image of God. And so the both sexes bear God's image fully on their own. Each does so in a unique and distinct way. That's what a complementarian is, whereas an egalitarian is. Uh, those are the people who would agree that women can lead in the church and be pastors and elders. And they believe that biblical equality uh, is true for male and female in the areas of authority and responsibility. Again, so that whether you're in the home or in the church or wherever, a woman can do everything that a man can do. And so there's been sort of this war in the church between egalitarian egalitarians and complementarians. And so because of it, this question has come up, should women be pastors? And most of the time when that question comes up, it comes up from people who've grown up on the conservative side of, of the debate. And so uh, I want to sort of help you think not so much, I'm not going to go into, well, here's what First Timothy says, and here's what Corinthians says. No, what I'd like to do is build a biblical framework to how to answer, how to think through when somebody asks you that question, or maybe you're asking that question. And so here's the first uh, answer I would give you. When someone asks if women can or should be pastors, you must first find out why. The truth is that when a woman is asking that question, by the way, or a man, when they're asking that question, there's a reason behind it. I found that uh, some of the reasons uh, have to do with, is there a sense of calling in your life that remains unfulfilled? Maybe as God has given you the spiritual gifts, some of those gifts are the gifts of preaching and teaching and exhortation and leadership. And so maybe you've tried to navigate, like how do I live out my calling in the context of a conservative church that doesn't allow me to do anything? So often this question, should women be pastors, grows out of an unfulfilled sense of calling. Maybe your issue is that you have, is there a wound that still needs healing. The church is made up of walking woundeds. I mean, we kind of know that. And one of the big areas of woundedness is the abuse of power by men against women and in, under this guise of, well, we're being godly and we're supposed to rule the house. And, and there's a misunderstanding of what it means to be a leader in the home as opposed to the Christ-like example of leadership, which is a sacrificial kind of love. Many men have screwed this up. And so there may be a wound that has led women to ask that question. And so it's important to sort of get to the root of it. Or maybe there's a question in your mind that has not been adequately answered. Answer. Maybe you've grown up asking, you've heard people on Twitter, on, on YouTube, on other venues that are sort of out, you know, talking about women and their role in the church and, and your church hasn't answered that logically or, or intelligently or at all. And so maybe your question stems from a sincere curiosity of what does the Bible teach about this? And so first, when someone asks you the question, if women should be pastors, you need to find out why. Secondly, when someone asks if women should be pastors, it will depend on who you ask. You line up 10 Christians, five are going to tell you one thing and five are going to tell you the other. It depends on where they fall on this issue. I love sort of thinking through the issues of debate in the Christian life into three big categories. There's the convictions. Those are the non-negotiables, the, the authority of scripture, the deity of Jesus Christ, the, the full humanity and the full deity of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Those are 
convictions. And then there are persuasions. Persuasions are sort of the second tier that there may be disagreement with. For instance, how do you baptize someone by immersion or by sprinkling? Or I remember growing up Baptist. We used to take, we used to believe in baptism after uh, salvation. I still hold to that, but my, we now go to Presbyterian church and they believe in infant sprinkling. And so we had to work through that. That is a different persuasion that will vary between denominations. The speaking in tongues, that might be a different persuasion. And then the opinions. Opinions are sort of like, what music should we play in church? And so convictions, uh, persuasions, persuasions and, and opinions or sort of personal beliefs on gray areas in the Bible. And so when it comes to women and the role in the church, so when you ask that question, it depends on who you ask. If you ask a complementarian, they're going to tell you one interpretation of scripture that kind of holds to sort of uh, the idea that um, uh, that there is a different role and function, equal, equality between men and women, but different functions in the home and in the church. And if you ask an egalitarian, and by the way, each can give you a ton of data to support their stance because there's a ton of books and you can get a PhD in either side. And so the egalitarians are going to use a different interpretation of scripture um, and that's open for debate. And so this is a persuasion. And so uh, Christians don't all agree on this question. In fact, uh, here's something to keep in mind. Christians who do not agree on the answer are still both part of God's family. What I mean is Christians who do not agree are not your enemy. So if you're in one camp, we've become so vilifying of the other side. And so you might be a Christian and be like, what? You're a complementarian? You're so backwards. Or, oh, you're a egalitarian? You're so feminist. And, and so there's these conclusions and caricatures that have happened um, that I believe are destructive to this conversation. Should women be pastors? Number one, find out why. Number two, it depends on who you ask. And number three, when someone asks if women should be pastors, it's important to understand what they mean. That word pastor has a lot of meanings. Pastor could simply be a shepherd of some sort. And so there's a lot of very conservative complementarian churches that use the term pastor, but they only use it in the context of, well, this uh, woman is a pastor of children. So the children's pastor or the youth pastor. And so they'll differentiate at what age a woman can, you know, take authority over leading at that age group. Uh, other churches think even the term pastor shouldn't be used. You know, remember that a, a, what, the heart of the debate has to do with the office of pastor which is a calling of God and leadership and setting authority and leadership and responsibility in the church. That's where the debate happens and in eldership. And so a pastor can be a job that gets paid. Maybe you're a chaplain in a hospital and they call you pastor. That can be a calling to serve God and his people. It could be an office in the church. It could be a shepherd of God's people. You could just be pastoring people in the, in the way that you, you know, maybe even your spiritual gift is a shepherding gift. And so you have a pastoral heart uh, or an exercise of God given authority. Again, I think when it comes to should women be pastors, usually the, the connotation of that question has to do with authority, with leadership, main leadership in the church. And again, we talked about how there's differing opinions in this. Uh, maybe you are looking today for, well, what does this verse say? And what does that verse say? Listen, you go and research, you will spend the next 10 years literally reading everything there is about it. All I can tell you is, um, number one, when you're asking the question, find out why, what's behind it. And if you have a calling by God to teach his word, then he will make a way for you to teach it. I'm convinced of that. I am a product of that in a very conservative, complementarian church background. And yet I've had freedom to teach God's word all over the world. It's because when God calls you to something, he will make a way for you to do it. I'm not the only person who will say that that is a model all over the scriptures and, and across the board in Christianity. Read the stories and biographies of missionaries from, from the early century to now. And you will see that pattern of God using his people in his time and in his way. And so if you're asking that question, uh, it will depend on who you ask and getting your answers. And it's important to understand what do you exactly mean when you talk about being a pastor? Hey, that's all I got for you today. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, do so right now. If you need prayer or if you have a question for me, send me an email at dearlina at livingwithpower.org. If you're looking for a biblical community where I teach the Bible on Thursday nights, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, join me on Facebook. In order to get there, the easiest way to do it is to go to livingwithpower.org. And when you land on that page, click on join our community. By the way, when you subscribe to the website, Living With Power, you will get in your email inbox daily devotional called Power Minutes that I think will bless your socks off. So if you're looking for a way to connect with God daily, subscribe, get this daily, focus on God, think about his word. Above all, have a great day. Remember that God loves you.